tell them in my speech, just say it. <laughs> and I like the way that you began your speech with speaking about where you were a few years ago or last year. And when I started about, thought about the just say it, one of the things that I've been working on is how people are showing up in the world. It's like I, I was sharing earlier with um, that you that one of my platforms that I want to work on is around mental and emotional well-being. And for you to say, you know, you were dealing with depression is really great because the more people say it, mm -hmm. the more people are going to start realizing that, in my opinion, it's just your brain being sad. Mm -hmm. Your brain is just saying to you, hey, give me something I need. I am not happy. And once we start seeing it and thinking of it that way, more people are going to go and get help. More people are going to start realizing that mental well-being is just all that is. We want to be well mentally. So just say it, just do it. Have people come together and say, you know what, what else can I do to help make sure everybody is living their very, very best life? So to the icebreaker said, you talk about yourself. <laughs> so in talking about myself, I started thinking about what is it that I would love to share that would make a difference in someone's life. And you kind of kicked it off. <laughs> and um, a few years ago, I was also dealing with, with um, I would call it grief, because grief and depression kind of live in the same parts of your brain. Uh, um, I had a lot of family members that passed away. I had a, a brother, a sister, my parents, a whole bunch of people died. And when people die, they kind of like, just do it, just keep on going. Do there yeah. is no grief. You know, people sit around and say, oh, take a few minutes and grieve. So I kind of like put on that mask and I just went on about my day and I didn't grieve. And then one day I was working for department education teaching. And one day I literally sat at the top of my stairs and go, I can't do this no more. I cannot walk down those stairs. It was too much. And I didn't realize at the time that it was grief. I just thought I was exhausted. I thought I was burned out. I thought a whole lot of things that was going on. But the bottom line was I was, I was out. I just didn't know how to cope with things that were going on. And fast forward, I started talking to more people and I found out they were depressed or whatever we're not calling it too. They weren't giving it a name. All they were saying is they didn't feel good they didn't want, they didn't like their jobs no more. And then I started looking at the signs of burnout. How many of you just don't want to go to work anymore? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you, no matter how, many, how much rest you get, you're still tired? <laughs> and we, we, we say that, we are being old. How many of you, no matter what you do, you just don't feel great anymore? Yeah, I, won't, I hate to break it to you, but those are signs of you not liking your life or having the best life possible. The good part about it is, it's good news. Because once you're aware of what's going on in your life, we can change it. Because awareness is the first step. You get aware of what's going on and you can start making changes. And one of the things you said, you joined five Toastmasters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> five is a bit much, but it works. <laughs> Sorry, Jess. Five is a lot. And, but but I'm just going to coach you just a little bit because I also do coaching. Be careful with five because you, you want to see what you're getting out of it. And once you understand what you're getting out of it, maybe make a little list yes. of what you want to get, and that way you don't get burned out because yes. what you're really chasing is deeper than just going to the Toastmasters. That's so true. get understand what you want from it. Okay. Thanks. So the other thing that, that I um, learned while I was at the top of those stairs, not wanting to go back down, I had no vigor. <laughs> 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 I definitely did not have the physical strength to continue. So I have I have part of a very large family. I'm the ninth child of twelve. <laughs> large family, right? <laughs> <laughs> so of course my family thought everything was well. Because I wasn't that person go, 
I'm having a problem. Because we don't talk about when we have a problem, right? We don't talk about that. We want everyone to think we're strong until something bad happens. And then they go, I didn't know that. And I also teach at, at Empire State College. And last night, one of our topics, one of the students shared with me that on um, last week, because she has told me she wasn't going to be in the class. And she shared it with me that her, her sister's partner committed suicide. And that was chilling for me because not only is that a life that maybe someone could have said something to them, she didn't know what to say to her sister. And the first thing I said to her is, we always want to say, what could we have done different? And honestly, because we're living in such a tight society, until everyone say, it's okay not to feel well, we're still gonna have those dry moments. So I'm gonna ask each of us to, instead of being that person say, oh, I don't know what's going on. Just ask people, just ask them, how are you doing? Just say, are you okay? Thank you.